Saint Anthony of Padua. This is great. I've been looking forward to this day for so long. Me too. Let's go to church and sign up for summer camp. It's going to be awesome. Can you imagine? Walks. Right. And we'll sing around the campfire. Selling cookies and saving money these past three months has been really worth it, hasn't it? Right. Did you bring all your money? Of course. Look, here it is. All present and correct. It's the bus. Quick, run! Sister Patricia, I want to sign up for summer camp. Here you are. I've brought the money. That's great. Selling those cookies really worked, didn't it? Yes, Sarah and I made enough money to go on the trip. So have we. But selling cookies was really boring. Have you already signed up for the camp? Yeah, of course. I'm going too. Take a look. I've got the... my backpack. What's the matter? Where's my backpack? You were carrying it. Yes, but... I've lost it. Oh. You lost the money for summer camp? And my books. And my notes. What am I going to do now? Don't worry. We'll help you find it. What's the matter? Sarah has lost her backpack with all the money for summer camp. I won't be able to go. It's all right. We'll organize a search party. If anyone finds it, they'll keep the money. You don't know that. You have to trust people. Here. These are holy cards of St. Anthony of Padua. We'll ask him to intercede with God to find Sarah's backpack. Besides, his feast day is in a few days' time. Yes, on June 13th. Many people pray to St. Anthony of Padua to find things that have been lost. Really? Yes, that's right. This devotion began with an event that happened long, long ago. On one occasion, a novice ran away from the monastery, taking a book of the Psalms which St. Anthony often used. Did he steal the book? He did. He took it without asking permission. So St. Anthony prayed for the book to be returned. According to one account, something very surprising happened. The runaway novice saw a terrible apparition, which made him turn around and go back to the monastery. And he returned the book to St. Anthony. Wow. All right, then. We'll pray to St. Anthony, and then we'll go look for the backpack. It's no use. Something tells me I'll never see my backpack again. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen my backpack? I think I left it on the bus. I haven't seen it, kiddo. In any case, there are several buses that work this route. I recommend you call the Lost Property Office. Let's have a look around here. Are you sure she just didn't leave it at home somewhere? I don't know. Maybe it's in her room at home, and we're wasting our time. Lost property? Yes, my daughter left her backpack on one of the number 14 buses. You don't have it? I understand. Never mind. Thank you very much anyway. It's not at lost property. I knew it! Whoever finds it will just keep the backpack and the bunny. I won't be able to go on the camping trip. Come on, Sarah. I'm sure you'll find it. It's no use, Sister Patricia. Don't say that. You have to trust in St. Anthony and the kindness of other people. But I've already looked everywhere. I bet someone found it and kept it. Really, you've done everything you can. All you can do now is commend yourself to St. Anthony's intercession. St. Anthony was born in Lisbon, Portugal in the year 1195. His real name was Fernando, 
but he changed it when he joined the Franciscan Order because of his devotion to St. Anthony the Great, Patriarch of Monks. When he was a boy, he offered his life to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Holy Mother, from this moment, I offer my whole life to you. Help me be a good son to you and to love Jesus more every day. Amen. When Anthony was 17, he moved to Coimbra. And there he studied the Bible. He was an excellent student and soon had a deep knowledge of the scriptures. When Antony was 25, the King of Portugal returned from Monaco with holy relics of Franciscan friars who had been martyred. Lord, I want to be a missionary and a martyr like your Franciscan sons. The following year, he was admitted to the Franciscan order and set out for Monaco to preach the gospel to the Muslims. He was so brave. Yes, but his adventure didn't last long because he fell sick and had to board a ship sailing back to Portugal. But a storm blew the ship to Sicily, an island off of the coast of Italy. What an adventure. Hey, look at this, a backpack. It must belong to some kid. There are school books in it. Is there a name and an address? Yeah, here we go. It belongs to a girl called Sarah. And here's her address. Then we have to give it back to her. Wait a sec. There's something else. Check it out. An envelope, and it's full of money. Another reason to give it back. But what are you saying? We can keep it. To prove I'm a generous guy, I'm prepared to give you half. Here you go. I don't know. This isn't right. Father Michael, why is St. Anthony of Padua so famous? Right. Well, you see, once he reached Italy, St. Anthony was sent to take charge of a small chapel dedicated to St. Paul. He lived in a cave and spent his whole day praying. But that wouldn't make him famous. Nobody knew about him because he lived in a cave. Right. But very soon his great talent became widely known. It was during the ordination of a priest at Forley. The monks had gathered together before the ordination ceremony. Brothers, due to a misunderstanding, none of us have prepared the homily for the ceremony. Would any of you be willing to improvise a sermon? Brother Antony, you know the Holy Scriptures well. Would you be prepared to improvise a sermon? I would be very happy to preach. Thank you, brother. Let the Holy Spirit inspire you. Yes, Father. And so when the time came for the ordinations, there was St. Anthony, ready to preach the Word of God. And when he spoke, everyone was very impressed. I've never heard such a beautiful and moving sermon before. This priest has a special gift for preaching. Everyone who was present was enthralled, overwhelmed by emotion and amazement. This is extraordinary. This priest really speaks to your heart. I've never heard anyone talk about God with such feeling. The minister provincial of the Franciscans called the young Saint Anthony and sent him to preach all over the Romagna region. Is that how he became famous? Yes. The churches were full of people who came to hear him speak. Many unbelievers were converted by his sermons. Father, I've never heard anyone speak about God like that before. I don't deserve praise. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks through me. You see, it's just that I want to return to the Catholic faith. Praise be to God who has touched your heart. I don't know what to do. The best way to begin speaking with God is to make a full confession. In that case, I want to confess right now. In the end, St. Anthony became a missionary after all. Right. Instead of Morocco, it was Italy. Father Michael, tell us some of the funny stories about St. Anthony. Very well. 
Saint Anthony was preaching in Rimini, but the unbelievers wouldn't allow people to hear his sermons. So he went to the sea and started to shout, Hear the word of God, all you fish of the sea, because the sinners on the land don't want to listen. The fishes popped out of the water and nodded their little heads. Hey, look! That's incredible! It's a miracle! Everyone come and see! Father Antony has performed a miracle! From that day, the heretics of Rimini had to let the people hear Antony's sermons. It's useless. The church is full. Since the miracle of the fishes, they see him as a saint. Hey, look! It's a holy card of a saint. Saint Anthony is the patron saint of the poor, and certain special alms that are given to obtain his intercession are called the Bread of Saint Anthony. This tradition dates all the way back to the year 1890. You see? This holy card is a sign that we should turn in the money in the backpack. You crazy? It's the other way around. This holy card means the backpack is a gift from Saint Anthony. He's the patron saint of the poor, it says so here. He's our patron saint. One of St. Anthony's most famous deeds was the miracle of the mule. What's a mule? It's a pack animal, like a donkey. Well, you see, a heretic challenged Anthony to perform a miracle to prove that Jesus was in the Holy Sacrament. So he didn't give his mule anything to eat for three days and then brought him to the church. My mule hasn't eaten for three days. And look, I have fresh hay right here. Ooh, doesn't it look good? Let's see which way he goes. <laughs> That's incredible. I can hardly believe my own eyes. <laughs> and this miracle convinced the heretics that Jesus was truly present in the sacrament of the Eucharist. You know, that stuff about the bread of St. Anthony has given me an idea. Let's buy some sandwiches with the money from the backpack. That money isn't yours. You can't spend it. Hey, if you don't want to spend your share, that's your business. I'm going to get something to eat. How can I help you? I want an extra large sandwich. Can I get tuna and mayo? Why, of course. Here, it's freshly made. Here, you can keep the change. Oh, thank you very much, sir. He called me sir. Yeah, but you shouldn't have spent money that isn't yours. Listen, don't start with the sermons. And St. Anthony became so famous that everybody went to hear his sermons. What about the unbelievers? Many of them were converted thanks to the words of St. Anthony. Despite being very sick, St. Anthony preached during all 40 days of Lent. The church was always full of people. The shops were closed, and people left their work to go to church. Did people think he was a saint? Yes, and everyone wanted to touch him, and they even tore off pieces of his habit. Wow! Oftentimes, St. Anthony preached from the town square because there were too many people to fit in the church. You know, this monk is a saint. I've never heard anyone talk about God that way. Mm, this is delicious. And look, I still have plenty of money left. That's weird. I'm sure I put the envelope in my pocket. Do you mean the pocket that has the hole in it? Rats! I forgot that my pocket was torn. Well, maybe you dropped it in the shop. 
You're right. Let's go. I bet that shopkeeper keeps the envelope. If he found it, he'll give it back to you. Don't be a fool. He'll just keep the money. People are greedy and mean. Not everybody is like you. You have to have trust in that shopkeeper's good faith. Oh, please. His good faith? What's wrong with you? You live in Cloud Cuckoo Land, where everyone's good and kind. Well, I'm sorry. It's not like that. Well, you know what I say. You got what you deserve for keeping something that wasn't yours. What did I tell you? There's nothing on the floor. The shopkeeper took the envelope. Ah, there you are. Here you are, my friend. You dropped his envelope full of money earlier. Uh, thank you. I see you have a St. Anthony calendar. Ah, yes. He's the patron saint of the poor and of bakers like me. I have a great devotion to him. Well, thank you very much. Gentlemen, you're welcome. You have a good evening now. You see? I think all that was a sign. A sign? Of what? Don't you see? The holy card of Antony that you found in the park this morning? The calendar of St. Antony in the bakery? I think God's telling you something with all these coincidences. Maybe you're right. Well, of course I'm right. I said maybe. Come on. You're thinking about turning in the backpack and the money, aren't you? Sometimes it makes me mad the way you know me so well. That's nothing to get mad about. We've known each other a long time. I know you better than your own mother. Come on, let's go to the address you found in the bag. Mom? What is it, Sarah? I'm disappointed in St. Anthony. My backpack hasn't shown up. You have to place your trust in St. Anthony's intercession. Okay, I'll wait a little longer. Meanwhile, I'll tell you more about St. Anthony. After a time, he moved to Padua, a city in Italy. Ah, so that's why they call him St. Anthony of Padua. Yes, you'll see. In this city, he preached until the end of his life, converting many people. Father, I want to begin a new life. You've convinced me to become a good Catholic. No, my son. I'm only an instrument of God. It is God himself who has knocked at the door of your heart. Open the door and let him in. You will find peace and true happiness. Here, Father, I'm giving you all of the money that I earned unlawfully. I want you to share it among the poor of the city. May God bless you, my son. You know, Father, I no longer fight with my family. We've all made up. I'm so happy to hear that. I've prayed a great deal for your family to be united, for your home to become a place of peace and love of God. Saint Anthony often went to speak to prisoners in jail. I'm sorry for what I did. I want to be a good person. I'm very happy, my son. God will help you in your new life. Many prisoners were set free and began new lives thanks to St. Anthony. It's amazing how many things St. Anthony did. Yes, he devoted his life to preaching the word of God. Is that the door? How strange at this time of night. Good evening, mister. I believe this belongs to your daughter. Here you go. Oh yes, she's been looking for it all day. Thank you very much. It was in the park. Thank you, thank you so much. Would you like to come in and have some food? No thanks. We just wanted to give it back. I'd like to give you some kind of reward. Please don't worry. We're happy to help, isn't that right? Um, yeah, sure. Well then, have a good evening, sir. Thank you once again.
Helen, Sarah, this is incredible. Oh, my backpack! Two homeless men brought it. You see, Sarah, I told you we should trust in Antony. Look! It's the envelope with the money for the camp! Today is the feast day of St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony was traveling, preaching in many villages and towns when he became very ill and asked to be taken to Padua so he could die there. But there was not enough time for him to enter the city and he only made it as far as the convent of the poor Clares in Arcella. There he received the last sacraments and sang a hymn to the Blessed Virgin Mary. I can see our Lord coming to me. A saint has died! A saint has died! Saint Anthony died when he was only 36 years old, and he was declared a saint less than a year after his death. The people of Padua built a basilica where his mortal remains are venerated. In 1946, Pope Pius XII made him a doctor of the church. Father Michael? What is it, Alex? What does it mean to be a doctor of the church? It means that his teachings and writings form part of the doctrines of the church, and they are a great help to many people.